Under new recommendations from the CDC, masking is becoming optional for most Americans. Instead of transmission, the new guidelines now focus on hospitalization rates and capacity, as well as new cases per 100,000 people over the last week. Let's bring in Dr. Mike to talk about this. So, Dr. Mike, hello, good to see you. Whenever a change in these policies comes, there's a lot of questions. Is it too soon? Is it too late? What are you thinking about the timing? Well, I think it's the right timing. In fact, the White House has just announced that masks are not going to be required if you've been fully vaccinated. So the good news is, is that we're slowly moving from the pandemic to an endemic world. And that means that if you're vaccinated, the CDC has really looked at this situation and said, hey, uh, we're going to relax mask mandates. And just as we heard about post-traumatic stress in kids, wearing masks does have some negative consequences. If you are in an area uh, where hospitals are not being overrun and capacity is not being a problem, uh, then I agree totally with moving on. In fact, I had a discussion with my son Nicholas yesterday about the fact that his school is now not requiring masks. He's vaccinated. And I said that this is where we're headed and we're going to take it one day at a time. And I think it's it's progress. Thank God. I agree. And, and I have kids all of all ages, too. And they're go we're all having that same conversation about masking and post-traumatic. What's life going to be like? I also have a kid who's uh, not able to be vaccinated. He's too young. And so, you know, what about younger kids? I know Delaware is, is ending their, their mask mandate starting tomorrow. So younger kids, uh, should parents still elect to keep masking them? Most experts have suggested that you surround your young children with a cocoon, if you will, by getting everyone around them vaccinated. That's how you protect your children. Personally, if I'm in a large, large crowd, I might wear a mask. I'm certainly going to wear a mask when I'm dealing with patients. I'm not going to go maskless anymore when I'm dealing with sick people. And look, if you're out there, you have uh, a serious medical condition, you're being treated uh, for cancer, then you wear a mask. Certainly, there are groups of people that should still uh, mask. But I think the risk to young children is very, very low. And so, again, you don't want to have the negative consequences of wearing masks when you are in a low risk situation. That's the bottom line. And we're going by the science. The CDC really carefully looked at the data and came up with these new metrics. I applaud them. I think it's the right way to go. All right. On a totally different note, uh, Dr. Mike, we're hearing about this new weight loss drug and you think it actually might work. Oh, you better believe it. It's not that new over here. Uh, just a week or so ago, one of the UK organizations gave it its full endorsement. But semaglutide, which comes in a different uh, couple of names, Ribelsis, Ozempic or Wigovi. Wigovi is the name of the drug that this semaglutide for weight loss and it actually works. And I've been in practice 30 years and uh, obesity is a major, major risk to people's health. It increases the risk of heart attack, stroke and diabetes. This drug works by reducing appetite. It is in my practice being, I'm, I'm using it more and more. And so it's one of the first drugs that's been approved for weight loss uh, in a number of years. And I'm finding clinically that it works. And most experts are, are in complete agreement with that. In fact, sometimes it's hard to get. The big struggle right now is getting insurance to pay for it. But if you look at the cost, benefit ratio. If you have someone who is obese not being treated, the cost to insurance companies is going to be much higher down the road than if we treat it early and get on a program along with diet, exercise, and all of the good things that we do to keep people healthy. So it just doesn't make you as hungry. And then you sit down to a plate of food and you only maybe only eat half of the plate and calories in, calories out. Right, Dr. Mike? Yeah, yeah, we should note 
uh, some people can get some side effects. Constipation is one of them. Uh, but to be honest with you, I've not seen much in the way of serious side effects. And again, if even you lose a little bit, and by the way, I think I have, what did I do with it? Um, I have a little, uh, th what you do with this drug, it's injectable. Oh, it's subcutaneous, wow. very simple. You, you grab your belly and you push this in, this little pen, and it gives the dose. And then you do that for four weeks, then you increase the dose another four weeks and gradually build up to a standard dose and the, the dose for weight loss that is kind of the uh, uh, long-term dose is 2.4 milligrams. Bottom line is it works, it's great, and it's a new treatment for weight loss that is seriously needed. Very cool. Groundbreaking. Dr. Mike, thank you.